we've got something here you don't see every day. Let's zoom in straight away to the front and get an idea of what it is. So the brand's Monivision, not something that you hear of. And more to the point, XGA high definition monitor. Now, I always try to dis show displays that are a bit different out of the ordinary. And as you can see, it's a monitor, can basically a computer monitor, but it's not like a 15 inch or even a 20 inch. It's what I would call a 29 inch monitor, um, a 68 centimeter tube inside it so you know it's a pretty big display for a computer you won't buy one of these with uh, a PC like a Dell or a Hewlett Packard this is a standalone monitor it's actually a professional presentation monitor um, one came up recently they don't they don't pop up often so I snatched this one up and I'm fairly pleased with it too it seems to be pretty good so we'll go back to this front panel and just have a look inside what's in there so that just pushes down now you've got um, you got your VGA in there now note that it says VGA 2 in there's actually VGA 1 on the back so it's pretty unusual for a display to have two VGAs in already there's your audio in left and right so this monitor does actually also have audio it's got its own speakers built inside it's not an external job and then you've got a host of buttons all the standard stuff for the gauze button that's handy righto so that's the front now i'm just going to go around and prepare the back because i'm um, um it's a it's a bit tricky actually it's got a little surprise around there thus we are at the back here's the sticker for it now who's the maker albatron technology Republic of China, so there's a fair chance it's made in China for sure. It doesn't say that it actually is made in there, but with that that uh, company address in China, it's got to be for sure. Uh, manufacture date January 2003, and there's the model number DM5952SF. None of those numbers there refer to the tube size. It's unusual. Let's get to something a bit more interesting, I suppose. There's your uh, power in. IEC connector, nice. You can disconnect the power cable from the monitor. Look at that, that's VGA out only, so you can daisy chain to other displays. And then we've got some um, got some inputs here that you wouldn't typically find on a monitor. So there's one composite in on the left with the audio, composite out with audio, and then there's an S video with its audio. And then there's the second VGA that I'm talking about there with uh, with its audio in and the headphone jack. And then you've got the aerial there. You've got an analog tuner there. So it is actually, um, it is a TV. It is a TV. Um, pretty redundant now with, with the analog system being turned off over here. But the, uh, the thing I really want to show you is that it's um, a bit different though, that, that this... This here on the back, I've uh, I've unscrewed the screws already. But there's a couple of tabs that hold this box in. This actually um, completely disconnects. Um, can't remember what the company calls this box, but look, it's just a just a bloody it's a extra inputs really. That's all it is. But when you take that box off, you get back to the to the core of it, and there's your there's your VGA in. There's the true original. VGA in on the back here and uh, with audio in in the RCA form and you see the connector for this box that attaches to the back it's a bit like a like a floppy drive three and a half inch floppy drive style connector um, so that's that's pretty unusual and there's the box again and there's its connector I'm not, not a big fan of this setup actually I think you know, it, it fits on all right, but I don't know if there's really good connection with the the plug in the socket there. I find that it can be a little bit intermittent here at the back. So, but you know, you can take that off and just run run VGA as it is. That's what I'm intending on doing. I don't want to use composite or S video on a thing like this. Okay, well we'll get back into it. We'll actually get some on-screen action now. Right, so the PC's hooked up to the uh, input on the front and I've got the Nokia test suite going here and those colors look really good 
and uh, generally it's just it's quite a, a pleasant image the geometries well convergence is really good you you got to look really closely to actually pick anything I mean the lines are that thin that you know you don't really see that too much blue or red tinge on the outside of the whites at all it's so fine and it's converged quite well so I'm pretty pleased with that and um, geometry linearity is pretty good I mean it's not dead dead straight on the outside but look just moving up and down there you could hardly tell you can see a little bit of curve up there in the top left corner but um, you know that's that's pretty good that's a good sign already I think it just it looks it just looks good um, while I think about it too uh, I must not forget to mention that it does have a remote. You don't get that with your typical PC monitor. It's got a lot of buttons that are different from a regular remote. Just, you know, bits and pieces and you wonder what they are. Um, so let's get into the uh, let's get into the menu system while we've got the remote here. I really like this menu system. It's pretty simple but it's got what you need to do the job. Now, it shows your horizontal and vertical frequency down the bottom. That's nice. Uh, what do you got? It's picture, audio, and options. Let's look at picture here. Yep, contrast, brightness. So, you know, typical PC monitor adjustments are available. No service menu crap. You know, no code to get into some secret level to adjust these things. Right, then you got another, another lot. Ping, cushion, trapezoid, bow, blah, blah, blah. And some color ones, a Degore's nice, and then uh, factory default for your geometry settings, and a separate factory default for the color too. That's good. You can play around and get your geometry right, and then you can get into the colors like I do and muck it all up. But you can just default the colors while your geometry is still the same as you said it before. That's handy. Let's just have a little bit of a fiddle with this. So now I like I like its range, like I'm. That's shrunk in fairly well. And it's fairly sort of speedy and it's very smooth. Very nice to work with. There you go, it's all stretched out. We'll get it back. Get it back within the borders. Yep. With this positioning. So it's got a fair range of movement. Nice again. Alright. Oh, no. Let's have a look in the sound department. Bass, treble, balance, volume. Now this subwoofer, when I take the back off the TV or monitor in a moment, you'll see this subwoofer, and I was quite shocked when I first saw it because I didn't expect it to have it in there, and it's it's it looks like a bloody we'll, we'll see shortly. And then in the options you've got um the one that I like is this instant on. Now what this means is that when it's turned on, yes as it is. When power is applied to the monitor, it will instantly power up and be ready. It's not in a standby mode, it's instantly on, which is something that you would want in an arcade machine, for example. You would turn the arcade machine on, you want everything to turn on, including the monitor. So that's a handy feature if you're getting into arcades and things like that. Um, I've, got to, I've got to show you also... I'll just turn the camera off and get it set up. Hang on. The 360 is now hooked into the VGA input on the back of the monitor while the PC is on the front connector. Um, they're not shared connectors. They're both separate, VGA1 and VGA2. And the great thing is too that you can make your adjustments here on the 360 and get it to fit on the screen properly and do the same for the PC as they're always different to one another, but it will independently record them for each input, which is great. You won't have to be continuously making adjustments. They're saved in for each input, which is beautiful. As far as compatibility with resolutions go, it's pretty good. It's not outstanding like a true small PC monitor that might be able to do all of these resolutions, but it probably does about 80%. It doesn't, it doesn't do you your high ones like the ones in front here now but being a 4-3 aspect ratio picture tube you'd want to match the resolution and 1024 by 768 is the highest for that job that you'll get um now it's it's a tidy it's a tidy looking unit honestly 
I'm gonna put Outrun on so I'll be back in a sec. Yeah, clean image, looks great. Looks great. This display is not one of those real bright and overly colorful sorts. It's it's a bit milder, but I, I like its tidiness. It just, it just is clean. It's quite likable for that. I think um, the resolution that I just set it at, um, compared to 640 by 480, it just smooths things up a little bit. You know, it's not quite as pixelated, and it's not as grainy. The texture in the of the graphics aren't quite as grainy, so it, it's probably the best for the job. Now, the monitor, um, if it's not receiving signals, it will turn off rather quickly. It'll only take a couple of seconds, and it'll shut off. But what I do like take the PC out there now, remove the 360 from the um, from the back, right, Lost. it's lost picture but the light's green still, and it's turned off, it's getting no signal, it's turning off, and watch this, even if I just plug in the VGA cable from the 360, I'm not pushing any buttons on the remote, I'm not doing anything, I'm just plugging the cable into the back, it picks up on it straight away and automatically turns on. That's pretty handy. Again, I think that's going to be a good feature for an arcade machine. It'll pick up on the signal and it'll get going straight away. Nice. I'm going to take the back off now. The screws are out of it, so it'll just pull off. The shell will come out. Before I do that, I'll note here that there was a tamper-proof sticker on here. That was sealed prior to me um, undoing the back and taking it off. So I know that this has not ever been opened before, tampered with or repaired. Uh, it, it is in pretty good nick, this whole thing actually. It um, just needs a little clean on the outside, but the inside was good, it was um, dust free. So it's been well looked after. Now, you're gonna get a little bit of a sort of a shock. I got a shock when I took this back cover off. Get that off. Now this bloody thing here, this bloody, it looks like some sort of exhaust system or a bazooka or something, you know, it's its the subwoofer that's inside. Um, I, I still don't like the sand, I never liked the sand on any of these monitors, TVs anyway, but, you know, it's a bloody big contraption and its uh, its it's put in well, its it's stuck in there well anyway, it's really secured well to the frame and chassis of the unit. Um, we've got some shielding on the back here. Chassis, of course, down there. Seen one, seen them all, I suppose. Probably not true, but you get the idea. They're all just a circuit board. Now, the tube of interest. The tube is one of these LG Philips when the um, two companies were working together. So that's, um, that's what it is. A bit more respect to LG now after seeing this thing. Um, the size that well the a new the, the letter there M at the start for monitor definitely a monitor tube and the 68 after it indicating a 68 centimeter. There's your regular speakers there, one on both sides. Um, that's pretty much it now. Uh, actually, I've got one more thing that I might just show you. Um, I should say too. Um, you know, I've researched on the net about these Monivisions a bit, and a lot of them, a lot of them state you can run component video through them, run 720p and 1080i. I don't know if that's true for this model. The remote doesn't have an independent component button like I've seen pictures of on the net. There's no dedicated component inputs, only composite. Um, I've used one of these little VGA to composite cables. There's no conversion in that cable. It's just routing the signals into the red, green, blue of the uh, VGA plug. But um, I couldn't get any component picture, um, component um, signal displaying on it. Not to say that you, you can't, but that's just what I'm saying with this model. I couldn't get it to go, so it's just strictly PC resolution affair here. Uh, I've got one more thing to show you. Um, you've heard me say a couple of times that th this and that would be suitable for an arcade machine. Well, that's pretty much going to be the destiny of this Monivision. It's a bit of a shame. I'm going to take the chassis and the tube out of the shell and put it into uh, another machine. It's actually my friend's restoring an Outrun 2 um, twin 
machine and he needs a monitor and it uses a 68 centimeter that's pure flat like this if I didn't already say it, it is a pure flat completely flat tube um, I've got the Cheerio uh, Sega Cheerio arcade system here with Outrun 2 in it just over there there it is there and uh, I'm gonna hook it up and we uh, show you how that goes it does work but I'll show you that just while I've got it all set up change of plan I haven't got out running I've got ghost squad in the cheerio instead it's running pretty well except here up in the corners I'm not sure what's causing that it's just curved in a bit but apart from that it looks pretty good Anyhow, that's the uh, the review of this Monivision done, so it's a pretty good unit. So pick one up if you can, but they're pretty rare. Anyhow, I've got some more videos coming up, so stay tuned. See you later.